and shut it shut it all down again. I mean, I know you're not big into supernatural issues, but you know, I when I look at all of this, I have to say, the Gnostics, uh, who, you know, to if I simplify the the idea Gnostic ideas, the not we know about Gnostic ideas because a batch of texts were found buried at a place called Nakamadi in Upper Egypt near the Temple of Dendera in Upper Egypt, and they'd been buried for one thousand six hundred years, and they were found in nineteen forty five, and they com- contain a complete corpus of uh, ideas of a people who call themselves the Gnostics, and they see uh, a, a dark force at work in the universe, which is which is seeking to snuff out the divine spark in humanity, and it's a supernatural force, and, and what they say is that the entity who we've been taught for the last 2,000 plus years to believe is God, <coughs> the, ent- the, the, Abra- the God of Abraham, who may be called Yahweh or who may be called Allah, that that, from the Gnostic point of view, that's not a god at all. That's a, that's a demon. That's a lower-level supernatural who's got this huge inflated ego who wants to be praised and worshipped, who's constantly urging his followers on to acts of violence and, and war. Um, and I think it's I, I, we cannot say there are any facts in this area. Maybe it's just the dark side of the human psyche, mm. uh, and maybe it's all generated by our brains, or maybe there is a supernatural realm. But I think it's, I think it's a, I think Gnosticism is a very useful uh, tool to look at the society we live in today. They believe that there were entities called archons who are evil angels who disguise themselves as human beings and mingle with us to drive us into all manner of crimes and and behavior that is hostile to the nature of the soul. And that's what I see happening everywhere. But they believed fundamentally we are good and that we have this light within us and that that the way to reveal that light is through is through knowledge that's why the serpent in the garden of eden is the good guy in the gnostic frame of reference well that's very bizarre the serpent being the good guy he's the good guy because he's saying to adam and eve you have to know the difference between good and evil you can't just be these thoughtless meat creatures you know who are wandering around in a happy days in the garden if you're going to grow and develop you have to make choices between good and evil and it's the tree of knowledge of good and evil that the serpent introduces adam and eve to and says you need to eat from that and if and 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 actually i i I would say this is true you you, we do need to we are defined by our choices it's through our choices that we grow and if we're ignorant of the context how can we hope to grow yeah and these I mean the stories of like Adam and Eve and the I mean all that stuff it's it's allegorical right I mean it's supposed to be there's 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 an allegory to there's certainly an allegory there's cer- 